Today on Zero Calvin, we will be taking a body scan and converting it into a Character Creator 4 character. Now, I've previously done a similar video that took a head scan and converted it into a head morph for Character Creator 3, but for technical reasons, doing the whole body was problematic. Now, the Character Creator 4 has an option that lets us fix the T-pose for a character. Doing the entire body is now possible. I use this method from time to time to get realistic skin textures with a minimal amount of fuss, but with some effort, you can also import the body shape as well. Before we get started, I just want to warn you that we will be using some moderately costly software to do this, so if you're looking for a free method, then please look elsewhere. Our 3DS wrap is mandatory for this process and goes for $370 for an indie license, but you can get it for half price around Christmas time. I will also be using Substance Painter, which costs $20 a month, but it isn't strictly necessary, only very helpful. I'm well aware that Blender can do wrapping and texture transfers and 3D painting, but it absolutely cannot do them as well or as easily as purpose-built software. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, what is your time and sanity worth? Free solutions are not always optimal. Okay, with that disclaimer behind us, let's get started. First, we will head over to 3D.sk to grab a body scan. I'm not a super big fan of this site, to be honest. I mean, they have some good models, but unless you purchase a ton of credits at once, the pricing for assets is kind of ludicrous here. Uh, I happen to have a bunch of credits with them, so this is what I'm using. They now have this new Clean a Post Scans section that is ideal for us, so we're going to work from that. Regardless of the site that you choose, you'll want to find a scan of a person in a pose that's as close as possible to the bind pose that is exported from Character Creator. This is because any difference in the pose from the bind pose will get encoded into the character morph and will have to be dialed back out manually later. Most of the scans here are clothed, but there are four or five nudes and some in underwear. We will pick one with underwear today so that I can monetize this video, but chances are that you'll want a nude model. The process is the same regardless. I'm going to use Miss Waja here, or Waha, or Waha, or I don't know how her name is pronounced in her native language, but we'll call her Waja. Waja comes with a low poly and a high poly version, a ZBrush file, and a color texture map. Some models may also come with roughness and normal maps if you're lucky. You can see that the low poly version is fairly low poly, and the high poly version is really detailed. Uh, you could actually bake yourself a normal map using the high poly against the low poly if you're feeling spunky, but that's out of the scope of this video. Okay, so let's get wrapping. What we're going to do is export out our base from Character Creator and then use R3DS Wrap to wrap it around the body scan figure. Uh, once they are the same shape, we can transfer the textures from the scan to the character, as well as saving this new shape as a character morph in Character Creator, which is cool, right? Okay, first we want to load the neutral base figure into Character Creator and export it in the bind pose. You must use the bind pose option here if you plan to import the character morph back in later. Uh, otherwise, you can pose a character similarly to the scanned model and choose the current pose option. Please note that when you export the character in the bind pose, the program also creates an OBJ key file that you will need when importing the morph character back into Character Creator, so please keep track of it. This has to do with digital rights management, as the file keeps track of all the morphs used on the character prior to export, so that you can't simply import the character back in as a new morph and claim you did all the modeling work yourself if you sell the character. Since we are exporting the neutral base uh, character with no morphs, it doesn't really matter anyway, but the program still asks for it. 
Anyway, now that our base character is exported, let's head to our 3DS wrap. This isn't a, a full R3DS wrap tutorial, so I'm using a node tree that I've already created. I'll leave some links in the description of other videos where I go into more detail, but right now I will give you a quick rundown. Uh, starting on the top left, we load our base character and then send it through some nodes that strip off things like eyelashes, tear ducts, eye sockets, and the mouth internals. Uh, what we want is one single mesh that just represents the outside of our character. On the top right, we load in our scan as well as its texture. The output of each of these gets fed into the wrapping node, which does the main work here, as well as the select point pairs node, which lets us show the wrapping node which parts of each mesh should line up with the other. On the bottom left, we have a lattice node, which will warp our original character in the exact same way as our stripped down version while keeping all the extra bits attached. You have to do this if you plan to import the morphed character back into Character Creator. If you try to import this stripped down version into Character Creator, uh, it will just complain because the vertex count will be all wrong. Below the lattice node is one that lets us save our morphed character. On the bottom right, we have a node that transfers the textures from one to the other, uh, one that fills in the extra space around the texture map, and one that saves the new texture. Now that you have the general idea, let's load in our new scanned figure. This one is from a previous project. I'm going to load in the high poly version just for fun. The textures are weird now because this texture actually belongs to the previous model, so let's load in the correct texture. Darn, the texture is a TGA, so we need to convert it into something that RAP will understand. God, that's horrific to look at, isn't it? Cool, so here is our scanned character, and here is our neutral character. Actually, uh, I tell a lie. I think I used the CC3 plus base female here, but it doesn't matter and you could use either one. Uh, notice that the arms and legs are at different angles and the fingers are bent backwards. We will have to correct for this later after importing the morph, unfortunately. I'm just going to move the scan closer to the same position as the base character. I should have probably nudged the scan over to the right a bit too, but mm, oh well. Next, we need to show the program some corresponding points. Sometimes you don't even need to do this, and RAP can just figure things out on its own, but I tend to get better results if I do the following points. I like to do four points around the eyes, two inside the nose, two on the nose, six on the mouth, one on the chin and neck, four on the ears, one on each nipple, and sometimes one just under the boob on nude figures. One on the belly button and the hoo-ha, one on the knee, one on the elbow, one on the border between the fingernail and the nail, one on each fingertip, and then the same thing for the feet. This is usually plenty, but you could add more if needed. Okay, now we get to press the magic button on the wrapping node. This is the speed in real time. It does the job surprisingly fast. Cool, huh? Now we have our base character wrapped around the scanned character. This is what the character looks like now. We can now play with the neighbors setting of the lattice node until everything looks correct. You usually want a small number here, but sometimes the wrap is weird and you have to up the number to smooth things out. As you can see here though, this time a larger number is actually causing finger issues, so I'll go with two. Now we can save out our morph character if desired. We also need the new textures, so let's create them. 
The scanned item can only have a single material zone, but luckily for us, the wrapped character can use UDIM textures. We start with U0 for the head. Notice extrapolate image fills in the blank spaces to make sure we don't have any funky seams later on. We then use save image to save the head texture. Don't forget to click compute current frame to actually save the image. Now we just repeat the same procedure for each UDIM tile. U1 is the body, U2 is the arms, U3 is the legs, we don't need U4 or U5, which are the nails and eyelashes. Here's what the textures look like. To apply them to the character in Character Creator 4, we simply drag and drop them to the appropriate place. We start with the head, then the body, then the arms, and finally the legs. We can now remove the clothing since the textures have underwear built in. The textures actually look pretty good overall, but there are a few problem areas we need to clean up. We will try to do the majority of this cleanup in 2D, but we may also use Substance Painter, a 3D painting application, to clean up areas that overlap seam boundaries. The first thing to do is fix the lips. This is a common problem since the mouth was shut during the transfer. Uh, we will open the mouth slightly to get a better look. We can launch the texture by right-clicking it and choosing Launch Texture. If you have a program defined in your program settings, it will load the texture into the editor of your choice, and uh, every time you save, the changes will reflect back inside of Character Creator, which is pretty cool. Here I'm using a combination of the Warp tool and both cloning tools in PaintShop Pro, but you're free to use whatever tools you prefer. The lips look better now, so let's close the mouth. If we try to clean up the hairs on the back of the head, we run into a problem with texture seams, so we'll have to do this in Substance Painter later on. If we close the model's eyes, we can decide if the eyelids are okay. These are okay enough for me, but you may want to clone in some clean skin from somewhere else. Now let's fix the hands, or specifically the fingertips. Frequently, uh, there are some traces of the fingernails that should be removed as well as cleaning up between the fingers. Notice when I press save, we can watch the problems disappear. Let's do the same thing for the gnarly toes. These are especially bad because the scanned model had many of her toes connected together. That's good enough for now. Uh, we may clean them up a bit more in Substance Painter later. If we look under the arms, there is a little weirdness in the armpit area. Um, and since this is also a seam area, let's just fire up Substance Painter and continue fixing everything there. Character Creator has a Substance Painter pipeline built in. We will use it for exporting the character now. Make sure to have it in a suitable pose for the areas that you'll be fixing. In Substance Painter, we start a new project and choose our model and settings. I tend to use the PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Blend template. I think this is also the one that Reillusion recommends to use. We will set the resolution to 4K, but you can work in 2K and export in 4K later if your machine is a little slower or your project is complex. We need to change the normal format to OpenGL, although today it doesn't matter since we're only using the color maps. We also want to use the UV tile workflow. This will make it relatively easy for us to mask out where the texture goes. And finally, we can import in our texture maps into our project as well. We just need the four color maps today. We want to make sure we are on the standard skinhead texture set. This contains all six UDIM texture tiles. Now we can delete that annoying default paint layer that I almost never use. He'll have to go play with the default blender cube. Now we add a fill layer. 
Over in the Assets window, we find our textures and drag our head texture over to the base color channel. This looks really weird at first because it is applying it to all six UDEM tiles. But if we click here, we can tell it that we just want 1001, the head. Just for the look of the thing, I'm also turning up the roughness so the skin isn't as shiny. This ultimately doesn't matter today because we are not exporting roughness maps, but um, it'll just look better as we work with it. We now add another fill layer and repeat the same thing for the body, this time picking 1002. The other two maps follow the same exact formula. Cool, now let's start fixing stuff. We wanna add a paint layer to the top of the stack and set it to pass through. We need this set for the clone brush to work on all the fill layers below it. Let's set the flow rate on the brush to somewhere around 50% to help us blend things together. While this tool works superbly, it is a little weird in that normally you would right-click to select the clone source and then left-click to paint with it. In substance, though, for some reason, you hold down V and left-click to select the source, and then you can left-click and drag to paint like normal. Why V? Ugh, who knows? Um, I always have to look it up nearly every time I use the tool. Now we can clean up these janky seams easily. We also might as well give her a little shave while we're here. We can also clean up her stray back hair too. If I had time, I would remove all her hair and her hairnet, or at least most of what would not be covered by sh a short haircut, but uh, that's up to you and you can do that on your own time. I'm going to clean up her face a tad too. Um, I probably should get rid of some of that back acne as well, but it is authentic, so I'm leaving it. This isn't a supermodel after all. Let's fix up the feet a bit more too. Okay, that should be it. So let's export these textures. Uh, we only need the standard skin head texture set. So let's choose that. Also within that set, we can just select the color channel. I goofed up and left this set to the PBR metallic roughness template. That's fine for today, but keep in mind that there is actually an official character creator template that you can install and you should be using. I'll leave a link in the description to a video on how to find and install it. If you were working with 2K maps, here's where you would select the export size, by the way. Now let's press export. Incidentally, how many people accidentally press save settings here? I do it nearly every time. My brain just sees save and I just go for it. Anyway, after export, we can press open output directory to see our new shiny textures. Excuse me while I just drag and drop these into Character Creator real fast. Hey, it looks like everything is great now. The neck is good. The pits are good. And so are the feet. Cool. There is at least one texture change I would recommend, and that is to make a version without eyebrows. This will let you change the eyebrows later on using either skin gen or using the facial hair system. Before we do that, let's save this skin as a custom skin so we can use it on any other character later in the future. Make sure that you have the word overall selected on your skin so that it saves everything about the skin. Now let's rename the current head texture so we don't save over it, then remove the eyebrows in Substance Painter and re-export the textures. When we apply our new texture to the character, we see some remnants of the eyebrows beneath them. This is actually from the normal map that belongs to the default character. We can remove this weirdness from the normal map by launching the texture and using our clone brush to paint over it with a smooth forehead texture. All better. Let's save this version too. Just as an example, if you ever want to use these, you can just drag them onto a character. This is another skin from 3DSK that I transferred previously. 
and just as easily, we can bring back our eyebrowed version. All right, if you were only interested in transferring the texture maps, then this is the end of the video for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. However, if you want to see how to import the body shape as well, then pause this video, have a snack and a beer, and then continue. Good, welcome back. The process I'm about to show you is pretty straightforward, but we will have to fix a few things afterwards, I'm afraid. It isn't too bad though, so let's get started. The first step, and the optional one, is to put the character into a T pose. The pose doesn't matter all that much to the process because internally the program is actually putting the character into the bind pose and comparing that with the imported morph to come up with the vertex changes that make up the new morph shape. But the T pose is a good reference for us to see how badly our scan pose varied from the ideal. Remember, any difference between the bind pose and the scan pose gets encoded into the new body shape by accident. So later in this process, we will have to reteach character creator what the correct T pose looks like for our character. No worries though, we will get there. To import the morph, we want to use the morph slider editor. Give your morph a name, and if you want, a subdirectory to place it in. I like to use full character to differentiate it from the only head and only body morphs. For the source, we will leave it as the default morph, which really means the default neutral character base that we have here. For the target, we choose file and then select the morph character that we exported from our 3DS wrap. We also have to give it that OBJ key that I told you to save, so dig that out. It should be saved in the same place as the base character was saved. It is very important that you check Adjust Bones to Fit Morph. This will move the bones into the correct location in the body and associate those bone shifts with the morph. If you don't do this, your character will come in all mangled and only get worse when you try to pose it because its bones will actually be outside of its body and nobody can work properly like that. You can also optionally have it automatically apply the morph slider to the character after it is created. You'll notice the character shifts out of the T pose, which is expected. You'll also notice that the eyes and teeth go floating out in space, which we did not expect. We can fix this by using morphs. Sometimes it's easier to see this process in wireframe view. Using the morph sliders, we can move the eyeballs down. We can only go to negative 999 though, uh, but if we click on bake, then it makes all the morphs permanent and zeroes out the sliders again, which then lets us apply them again. Then we can do all of this again for the teeth. You might notice that the jaw or chin looks weird. Uh, this is because the associated bones are out of position. We can fix them by using, surprisingly enough, the adjust bones function. We can switch to the face and then click auto position to let the computer do the work for us. Now we can open the jaw again and bask in our awesomeness. After getting the teeth in place, it's best to check some expressions and see if anything needs tweaking. When we're happy, we can bake one last time and save our progress. We are now ready to fix our incorrect T pose. If we don't do this, then every pre-made pose or animation that we apply to the character uh, will end up with the legs spread out you know, more than intended and the uh, arms lower more than intended. Luckily, Character Creator 4 now has this wonderful menu option to let us correct the T pose. Once we enter it, 
we use our rotation tool to rotate all the bones into position. It's probably best to turn symmetry off and uh, make sure to be on local rotation, not world rotation mode. Once we're happy, we can test our character with some stock poses. This doesn't look too bad. Uh, if I were doing this for real, I might spend a little bit more time fine tuning things, but for demo purposes, this will do. Well, she's looking good so far, but maybe not so fashionable with that hairnet. And technically, she has a cone head right now. As I said before, you would normally clone the skin texture over the rest of the head, either in 2D or 3D. But um, we also need to fix the head shape. Luckily for us, Character Creator has some mesh editing tools built in, so no need to fire up Blender. We can select some of the top vertices and use Soft Selection and the Move tool to round out the head a bit. From there, in the Sculpting section, we can use the Smooth tool to round out and smooth the head. Cool, once that's done, we can give her some hair. This one probably works. Uh, we may need to tweak it just a little though. Now, let's give her a smile. We might as well also change her eye color back to brown to match her real appearance. Perfect! Now you might think we are home and dry, but there is still one more step. You'll notice that because we baked our model, the main body morph is no longer applied. And if we ever try to apply this main body morph to another character, those eyes will still go all crazy and the teeth too. This isn't good, but fear not. I'm going to show you how to create official head and body morph sliders now. For that, we go to create head and body morph sliders, surprisingly enough which does exactly what it says on the tin. We just select head and body to make both sliders at once and then give it a morph name. I usually don't include a sub path here because technically we want full head for the head and full body for the body. So we will just edit them separately after creation. Now that we have them created, if we check our currently used, we have both our sliders here. If we dial them back, we have our default character again. To edit these locations, uh, we just click on the pencil next to each morph and give each one an appropriate subcategory. Now, if we want, we can mix and match our head with a different body. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Save your work and take the rest of the day off. You've earned it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.